In addition to the point you are making, I, I also want you to respond to uh, another twist in this uh, latest news. The U.S. prosecutor has said, and so following the announcement of the order granted by the court, it will now, uh, he says that the government will now begin a round of negotiations on how this money uh, can be repatriated. And uh, this will not be the first time that we'll be getting this narrative uh, from the international community where these state funds are stashed. You're talking about uh, conditional repatriation of, um, of this uh, funds, uh, Nigeria's Commonwealth. I, I wonder how this uh, stance by the international community sits with you because if their money was stashed in our own you know, bank account, it wouldn't be the same. First off, they would have even before now long before now, worked on how they would get the money on no terms, on you know, no conditions at all uh, brought by the Nigerian government? No, um, again, um, I speak from point of knowledge and the issue of condition uh, do not want to arise in this case. To recall, Nigeria have had a very bad history of repatriation until the repatriation of the Abasha to the $3.2.5 million dollars when the Swiss government uh, court ruled that there should be kind of a framework of transparency and accountability. Prior before then, over six to $700 million that was returned to Nigeria was misused. So you also understand that there is a political interest around this repatriation thing. Some people in those countries, those jurisdictions where this money is stashed in, do not even believe that they should even return the money because in the first place, they don't trust our financial system. They don't trust our system because if it is returned, uh, it's going to be stolen again. So they want to put in place a safeguard. And some of us um, that has been working on asset restitution in the country also understand this very well. I've not participated in monitoring this process since in the 90s. We have discovered that some buildings and some rules government claim that they use the money to build. We can't find them. We can't locate them until the Abasha to the $322.5 million which was put into cash transfer program. And if you look what has happened in the last few yeah. weeks, how money meant for poor people in the country was, has been mismanaged, shared among ministers and civil servants across the country, it doesn't send a wrong, a good signal. It doesn't send a good signal for those who are working day and night for money to be returned back to the country. You can see now that a minister, how he distributed them uh, three billion, all in an attempt to just reorganize uh, the social register. So when you hear this kind of news internationally, I'm sure that you also agree that those people, they are human beings. They can't trust such a system. So because of that, there is a system put in place, principles, which Nigerian government also acceded to. And that after the London Anti-Corruption Conference in London, the US and the UK government came together to organize a follow-up meeting they call the Global Forum on Asset Recovery in Washington in 2017. Nigerian government and other three other countries participated. At the end of the meeting, there were set principles. There are about 10 principles that they agreed on to guide the restitution of asset, dispositions of asset, how when asset is identified, it should be returned back to the country. And that complements the UN Global Anti-Corruption Treaty, which is the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNCAC. UNCAC is a global anti-corruption framework that guides different jurisdiction on how they go about cooperating in restitution assets. There are articles, particularly chapter five of that convention, that deal squarely on the issue of asset restitution. It guides control on how they will act. So when you take that global forum on asset recovery principle, principle then talks about the inclusion of civil society in the monitoring. And there are other principles that talks about transparency, accountability, the exclusions of those who, who perpetuate the crime not to benefit from the restitution. Putting those princi principles in practice is part of the thing they are talking about how we are going to negotiate the restitution. And that principle has been put in practice in some of the restitution that has taken place in the last two, three years. And it has worked for Nigeria. Today, Nigeria is one of the um, poster child of success story uh, how assets should be returned. We, we just came back from Atlanta and we presented the mantra report. The mantra is civil society actions around the restitution, how we monitor the process independently. 
It didn't cost us all these millions of dollars you are hearing from humanitarian affairs for monitoring. We'll use little money to do that monitoring. And to a large extent, we will not claim perfection, but at least the cash transfer program worked well in Nigeria. And at least most of the money as agreed on in the agreement with the Swiss government went to the beneficiaries across the country. And if there were grievances, there were some level of corruption, we use the grievance mechanism to seek redress and resolve some of those issues. ICPC went to investigate, officials caught in shady deals were dismissed. So what am I trying to say is that there is no conditionality in this. What Jesse government is saying in the negotiation, and we are also going to write to Jesse government, we will not want the 8.9, 8.2 billion dollar to be sent to Nigeria and put in Nigerian budget, and nobody know what it's used mm. for. That's right. Because it doesn't make sense. That's right. President, President Tinubu government has to come up with a strategy. As we speak now, we don't have any anti-corruption strategy. Mm. President Tinubu has come into power. He's going to have many months now. Tinubu need to announce to the world that this is my strategy, and this is how I, this is what I will be doing with restituted asset. Mm. It will send confidence to other country. That is not, that is absent totally. So nobody will just pick the $8.2 billion and then throw it to Tinubu's government. No. Tinubu government has to see that. I'm happy that they have set up an investigation team under the leadership of the finance minister, which we, the civil society, are going to engage. Okay. The experience from what has so, happened so, in the So uh, let me quickly come in. You, you already answered the question I wanted to ask as about the, you know, the strategy the government is putting in place to ensure that you know, pilfering of public funds is not uh, you know, a, a recurrent uh, thing to do. But then, how do you think the global community itself can also contribute to preventing similar instances of corruption and embezzlement you know, in our system? Because we only get this money back, about 3.65 3 billion US dollars you know, repatriated from uh, Bacha loot you know, during the Bora administration. But then, I'm not sure whether we got the interest. So how does the global the community the play, added, play the role? The interest, was the, the interest was $13 million. Calculated, and right. Added. Yes. So, what role do you, uh, do you think the global community can play in ensuring that this does not recur again? Well, the first thing is that, like I said, we just uh, came back from the UNCAC. Um, UNCAC is the COPS meeting, the Conference of State Party for the uh, United Nations uh, Conference on Against Corruption. And, you know, that, at that meeting, there were quite a number of resolutions, even Nigerian sponsored resolutions around and beneficial ownership and asset recovery. What they're trying to look is that, you know, like the companies that were used to siphon some of this money out of the country, ownership, if you know the owners, is easily, you can easily trace it. And if you look what has also happened during the humanitarian affairs scandal, some of the companies were traced to some of the ministers in Tinubu's government. The reason why that happened is that we don't know the owners. So then Nigerian government have now design a beneficial ownership register, which means that every company that operates in Nigeria, you will be able to know who are the owners. And in that process, issue of conflict of interest can easily be identified. And so um, one of the things that the international community is putting in place now, both US, UK government, is getting a register of beneficial owner so that we know who are the owners of the company. They are trying to also clean up the offshore system where the financial, global financial system, there's transparency, there's accountability. There's a global move towards that direction, or in an attempt to clean up the global financial system to make it almost impossible for ABC financial flow to move around. There's, a, there's another thing that they're also putting in place in UK and US is um, an unexplained wet order. The unexplained wet order is a framework that you cannot just easily come up and say, I'm a multi-billionaire now. You have to explain. So the ESCC or the ICPC should be able to use that law to hold any government officials accountable. And the individuals can blow whistle on individuals that, hold, that will just have um, uh, buildings or material things that they cannot easily escape. Okay. So those are some of the things that is ongoing. Uh, uh, all right, but let me quickly push this, this last question because we have indeed run out of time. Uh, a section of uh, civil society believes that 
this repatriation will not go down without a fight uh, because New Jersey or the Jersey uh, government will claim that it is entitled to, to a portion of it. The U.S. or whichever other country that had a role in recovery too would also request uh, a, a portion of it. I, I wonder where you stand and, and do, uh, kindly give us you know, your brief response uh, so we can round up. You know, people speak um, about this whole thing. They are not very conversant about the rules. It's very clear. It costs those countries to investigate, to identify resources to be able to identify those resources wherever they are located. And then in the international treaty, there is a framework to compensate those actions. So it's not a wrong thing. There are, there are percentages that will go for the country where this money was located. There's nothing wrong. It's a good practice. Otherwise, you will not see those countries will not be incentivized to give you the support. Left alone with Nigerian government, they will not be able to trace this money. I can tell you. All the money recovered so far, returned back to Nigeria so far, is as a result of the cooperation of the international community. So who pays for those jobs? Who pays for those actions? So that's why the, the legal, the global legal framework around asset restitutions favors that practice. So there's nothing wrong. The only thing we are saying, the percentage should not be too homogeneous. Right. And, and it should be in a kind of consideration. So we are all working towards a good practice. And I'm sure that the role that Jesse government has played so far, uh, to a large extent, is a welcome development. And we as civil society, we have been engaging the Jesse government. We will continue to engage the Jesse government. We are also going to engage the Tinubu's government. All right. It is not just business of the Tinubu's government alone. The All government right. must create an enabling environment for civil society to engage so that ministers who are asked to take responsibility on behalf of the president don't go and create their own company, create right. their own system. That's right. All right. The money. Reverend Ugolo, uh, a fine place to uh, you know, rest our conversation. We're already hitting the top of the hour. David Ugolo, the executive director of Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice, Thanks for your insights, and we hope for a more active role uh, for the civil society in this new year regarding all these very uh, crucial mandates uh, before us. And that's how Thank we wrap up the program this morning. What